Hey everyone, this is Mark Bachman from San Jose Clean Energy. We are just a minute after 1 p.m., so let's go ahead and get started. The purpose of this webinar is to get in touch with the solar service providers who are in San Jose Clean Energy territory uh, to make sure that you have the information that you need to be able to communicate to your customers and just begin uh, an ongoing contact and relationship with San Jose Clean Energy. So we're going to assume that a lot of you already have customers who are in other CCA service territory. So this is going to be a pretty high level overview and we're going to run through a lot of the basics very quickly. Um, but if there's any information that we don't get to or you'd like follow up on, uh, my email and phone number are at, on the last slide and we can also send these out uh, by email as well. Um, there is a chat. You're welcome to write in questions, um, and we can use those for some of the Q&A at the end, and then I can also unmute people when we get there as well. Uh, if anyone's having any issues with the audio, just let me know, and we can try to make some changes. But anyways, let's get going. So we're going to start with the basics of what is community choice and what is San Jose Clean Energy as a community choice energy program. So community choice is a, a legal framework that was adopted by the state legislature in the early 2000s as a way to reintroduce choice back into the regulated electricity marketplace in California. Uh, as you are probably well aware, when you are paying a PG&E bill, there's really two services you're paying for. Distribution, which is managing the grid, delivering power, metering, and then generation, which is putting power onto the grid on behalf of customers. Uh, as a community choice energy program, San Jose Clean Energy, we are only taking over the generation services. So we source that power, we put it onto the grid on behalf of all of the residents and businesses in the city of San Jose. PG&E remains the distribution utility. They transmit that power, deliver it to the customer. And at the end of the day, the customer has a choice for power, one of which is cheaper and cleaner and promotes uh, local energy programs as well. So all in all, a good thing. To give you a snapshot of what's happening in California and in the Bay Area with regards to community choice, San Jose is actually one of the, the last pieces of the Bay Area to go community choice. We're the eighth Bay Area CCE. Um, you'll sometimes hear me say CCA, Community Choice Aggregator, as well as CCE, Community Choice Energy Program. Uh, we're serving uh, almost 50% of all of PG&E's load. Um, so PG&E has lost almost half of their customer base from, for generation services, and those customers are now being served by Community Choice Program. And across the board of the Bay Area CCE programs, we are a cleaner power mix from less carbon intensive sources, and we're a lower cost than PG&E. And again, stepping back one level further, if we're looking at what's happening in California, just at the end of 2018, we're seeing a continuation of really fast growth in community choice energy in California. Uh, as of 2017, about a quarter of the state's load in IOU territory uh, investor and utility territory was being served by an alternative generation source. And that includes direct access, that includes community choice, and that includes net energy metering. In just a few years, that'll be as high as 85%, as estimated by the PUC, uh, with the majority of that growth happening in the community choice uh, space. So that's the basics of community choice uh, as a, a model, as what we're seeing in California. And now we're going to talk a little bit about uh, what's happening uh, with San Jose Clean Energy in particular, because every community choice program is designed to reflect its community. And so we're all a little bit different, even though we operate largely the same way. So San Jose Clean Energy, we're a central part of the city of San Jose's Climate Smart Plan. Uh, Part of the reason that community choice was adopted by County of Marin as the first community choice energy program in California was because it was the most cost-effective way for them to reduce a huge amount of greenhouse gases. 
Um, and that continues today. That's why you see the rapid expansion of the model, because from city of San Diego to the counties surrounding uh, Los Angeles, um, throughout the Bay Area, as we saw, local governments are seeing here's a really cost effective way to dramatically reduce greenhouse gases from electricity generation. Oh, and have customers pay less, be able to promote local economic development and programs. Um, so really just a very uh, exciting model that's getting a lot of expansion and a big part of the city of San Jose's climate smart plan. Uh, we also do coordinate with other city departments. So that means Department of Transportation, as we in the future roll out different EV charging incentives, we're coordinating with their EV plans, public works, environmental services. Other CCAs serve multiple communities, multiple counties and cities at once. We are just serving the city of San Jose, and that gives us a lot of nice benefits in terms of being able to integrate the work we do in a very efficient way with other city departments. And just to give a, a sense of the scope, we are serving approximately 350,000 accounts uh, that equal service agreements. And we will be sourcing annually just about uh, 4,000 gigawatt hours of power. So just about uh, 4 billion uh, kilowatt hours every year. So one of the points that we like to really communicate and that we hope you'll feel empowered to communicate to your customers is how to think about San Jose clean energy. What are, what are our goals? What are we trying to accomplish as an organization? So we are an enterprise department of the city, uh, similar to the airport. And what that means is that the revenues we take in and the programs we fund is totally separated from the city's general fund. So none of the revenues that we take in for sourcing power for customers is going to end up in any other city department. We're totally separate. We're also, that means, a not-for-profit. So we're not looking to make money off of the customers in San Jose. We have a different incentive structure from an IOU like PG&E. So what is motivating us? Uh, one of our core goals as an organization is to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. So everything we do is going to have a greenhouse gas reduction element component lens. The other, one of our other key goals is lowering and stabilizing customer costs. It's part of our mission uh, and part of our charter as a department, part of the goals that the city council had in launching us is to help customers reduce their costs. Um, at launch in particular, um, that will be, you know, very, um, We'll, we'll get into the cost reductions in a little bit, but it's not gonna be life-changing for your customers. The overall value proposition is cheaper and cleaner power, um, and, but we're a nice downward pressure on energy costs. And I think that's the way to think about it, is that as we're cleaning up our power source, we're also creating a little bit of a downward pressure on rising energy costs. Continuing on with that, we have a local economic incentive. So we wanna promote local jobs, we want to make it easier to be a resident, to be a business operating in the city of San Jose. And then finally, we also want to help promote local, the development of clean energy resources. That includes solar, that will include EV charging. In the future, that may also include battery storage. Again, anything that helps these larger goals of reducing emissions, lowering and stabilizing customer costs, economic development, um, we're at a time where there's a lot of exciting work happening in the DER space, and we're, we're really excited about some of the programs and work we'll be doing to support that. So this is our launch year 2019 power mix. And so there's a couple things that I'll walk through here. Um, so this is showing where is San Jose Clean Energy sourcing our power from versus where is PG&E sourcing their power from in the most recent year where they were publishing um, their power mix. Uh, San Jose Clean Energy is 80% totally carbon free with 45% of that coming from renewable energy resources. Um, and we have a 20% unspecified component, meaning 20% of the power we're sourcing is just from unattributed grid power. Now, a couple points on that. So a lot of people and your customers may ask, what's the difference between carbon free and renewable? The answer is primarily large hydro. Large hydro is a carbon free resource that is not included in the state's renewable portfolio standard. 
Um, the other question a lot of people may ask, or, or you may be asking looking at this, is are you really that much cleaner than PG&E? And if you'll remember in the slide talking about the expansion of community choice, PG&E has already lost about half of their load to community choice programs. And as that happens, they're able to get rid of their dirtiest power contracts first, and the carbon-free resources like large hydro and nuclear that they do have make up a larger and larger percentage of their remaining load that they're serving. So although we're only a little bit more carbon-free than PG&E, it's actually a testament to the, the impact that community choice programs have already had is that PG&E is as clean as they already are. Um, additionally, our power services team has uh, set a goal of being entirely sourced from carbon-free resources by 2021, and we're always gonna have a significantly higher renewable energy component in our mix. So very quickly, we're gonna be totally carbon-free, and we're always gonna be doing more to support uh, utility-scale renewable energy development. And again, this also says, while we're doing this great work of cleaning up the mix, we're offering a 1% discount to customers on all generation charges. Um, so that's just our launch discount. Like other CCAs, you know, we're optimistic that we'll be increasing that in the next few years as well. So one uh, other offering that we offer that's relevant for a lot of your solar customers is Total Green. And this is our premium 100% renewable energy source product. So what that means is any customer, whether they're a business, or a resident or a solar net energy metered customer can choose that all of their grid power that they consume be sourced from 100% renewable energy resources, so primarily wind and solar. Previously under PG&E's Solar Choice Program, that was not available to residential or commercial MEM customers. Under San Jose Clean Energy Service, it is. Um, so the price for residential customers for that premium for total green is a penny per kilowatt hour. And for solar customers, that premium applies to both the export as well as the import. So when they're using them, their, their premium is applying to the credits as well as to the charges from when they're drawing grid power. So for a really reasonable additional cost for the power they consume from the grid, solar customers can source all of their power from uh, renewable resources. So let's talk a little bit more now about how San Jose Clean Energy as a community choice program in, interacts with and, and impacts uh, solar customers. So overall, the main message for all of our customers is that San Jose Clean Energy is a big improvement with a relatively small change. So San Jose Clean Energy means customers are sourcing cleaner power, uh, it's being provided to customers at a lower cost. They have more resources here. They're able to communicate with our staff, communicate with our community advisory commission, or speak directly to city council, and have a much more responsive, uh, flexible um, interaction with us than obviously you would be able to have with PG&E. And that's part of what we're doing here today, is we want to begin to have these relationships with you as solar installers, so that we have more opportunities for collaboration and, and serving our joint customers better and better in the future. And number four is we'll also be providing new services, new programs, new incentives. And that'll largely be around things that um, interact really nicely with solar. So, you know, again, EV charging infrastructure, battery storage, all of these things have the potential to improve the return on investment for solar um, or, you know, as, uh, Tesla likes to, to hope is that when someone buys an EV, they're also more likely to go solar. So finding really good um, just avenues for collaboration like that. And so a lot of good big benefits happening, but fundamentally a really small change. So one, no action is needed. Um, San Jose Clean Energy, we are the default generation service provider for all residents and businesses in the city of San Jose. So unless a customer chooses to affirmatively stay with PG&E, for both generation as well as distribution services, they'll all automatically be getting a cleaner mix and a lower cost from San Jose Clean Energy. And everything that PG&E provides to customers today, they will still do. PG&E remains the distribution utility. So 
all of the residents and businesses in San Jose are still PG&E customers for their distribution charges. PG&E will still uh, provide the same bill. Customers just pay the one PG&E bill. Um, but there will be more information on the bill because the San Jose clean energy charges will be broken out separately. Um, so customers do not lose anything, whether it's incentives, customer support, um, uh, services for interconnection and permitting, all of that still stays, stays the same as PG&E remains the distribution utility. So even a little bit more specific, uh, specifically for solar customers, what's the same? Um, and this is going to be a lot of the questions that your customers are going to have. Uh, do I lose anything? Do I gain anything? Um, and here's where we can talk about that in, in some more detail. And if, again, if you have any questions, you can put them in the chat right now, and we'll have time at the end as well. So one of the big things, obviously, is, is that NEM is the same, net energy metering. So when a customer is wondering, well, how to, you know, is the value proposition for solar the same under San Jose Clean Energy Service? It is. Um, customers can still get the same value for net energy metering for installing solar. The only difference now is that there's going to be a slight reduction in generation charges for the power that they do draw from the grid. Um, from your perspective, PTO, interconnection, permitting, all of that's the same. All of that is unchanged. Uh, the PG&E energy statement and bill is still the same. Customers still have um, the, the energy statement each month and an annual true up. And customers that are on an E6 rate, they keep that when they're enrolled with San Jose Clean Energy, even if they later return to PG&E. And same with their NEM 1.0 status. So in all of these ways, very little changes. Uh, there are some differences, and one of the things that we really like to draw people's attention to, and one of the reasons why we have not done uh, an enrollment of residential MEM customers yet, is because when we enroll a net energy metered customer into San Jose Clean Energy Service, pg e requires that that customer trues up. So, you know, you, you can understand where if a customer gets trued up early, they may either have charges that they would have otherwise been able to offset, or they may zero out credits that they were going to use later in the year. So we will be mass enrolling all of uh, the residential MEM customers in 2020 through a segmented process that automatically brings in those MEM customers close to their existing true up date to really minimize any disruption that would come from that enrollment process. Now, one point uh, to be clear, is your solar customers can affirmatively choose to enroll with San Jose Clean Energy today. Uh, right now, for 2019, we're requiring that residential MEM customers, if they do want to join SJCE, that they do so on the total green 100% renewable service offering. Um, and that, again, is just to, to have the majority of solar customers come in in 2020 through a segmented process. But your customers can join today. Um, and we're happy to have them on the total green rate. And so additionally, they have that option now, uh, which was not available to them under PG&E, under pg and &E Solar Choice Program. Solar NEM customers can come in and have their grid power be sourced from 100% renewables. And finally, for that subset of customers that are being uh, net exporters over a 12-month period, we are paying a significantly higher net surplus compensation rate than PG&E. PG is paying the wholesale rate. We're paying something closer to a midpoint between wholesale and retail. And you can find that published on our website. So again, uh, to go again into more detail about when we'll be enrolling NEM customers. So all commercial NEM customers, because they were on monthly billing in, um, under pg and status quo service, um, they were enrolled in 2019. Um, residential MEM customers, as I said, can self-enroll onto Total Green. Um, for those customers that are going to go solar between now and 2020, they're welcome to come on board on our standard service. So if you're naturally going them, you're under default service. If you're already a NEM customer and you want to enroll with San Jose Clean Energy uh, before 2020, that's when we're requiring a total green selection. 
Uh, but, but one message we'd like to make really clear is there's really no need to wait to go solar. There's no benefit to waiting. Um, we like to minimize that uncertainty that your customers might be having around that as much as possible. So commercial customers were enrolled in 2019. Residential NEM customers will be enrolled in a segmented method in 2020. If existing NEM customers want to enroll this year, they must be on total green. But if a residential customer goes NEM between now and 2020, they'll be enrolled under the default uh, generation service from San Jose. And again, I know that there's, that's a lot of um, nuance, so please, if you have any questions on that, um, write it in the chat, and we can also follow up by email and phone afterwards as well. So really, when, when you're talking to your customers, the main value proposition is the same. Um, you want to make sure that they're clear on the enrollment process, that when they enroll, they'll true up. Um, we'll be doing a segmented enrollment to minimize that. If your current solar customers want to join us, they do so on total green. If a customer just goes solar, they're under our, our standard green source service offering. So finally, the, uh, a little bit more of the exciting stuff, what will San Jose Clean Energy be doing to help support solar moving forward? And I've talked about this uh, a couple times briefly, but really our program work is where I think a lot of the value add is going to come from San Jose Clean Energy for solar within the city of San Jose. So like all CCAs, when we, when we buy on the wholesale market and sell retail for generation charges, um, the surplus that we receive goes to either a rainy day, uh, a rainy day rate stabilization fund, um, it goes to reduce uh, customer costs straight into a discount, or like other CCAs, we're going to use it to fund local programs. And those programs fall into three uh, main categories, all of which really make solar uh, more valuable. So the first is transportation electrification. Uh, the transportation in the Bay Area is the number one source of greenhouse gas emissions. So San Jose Clean Energy will be developing incentives and rates and programs to support EV charging infrastructure, to, be, to support EVs directly um, through individual purposes and then through fleet purchases. Um, and then we'll be designing ways to make sure that EV charging um, is cost effective for customers. The second sort of big bucket is in building electrification. So helping fuel switch from natural gas heaters and water heaters into building electrification. Um, and then finally, distributed energy resources. So we want to help battery storage where it's reducing greenhouse gases and reducing customer costs be deployed in the city of San Jose. Um, and also, uh, again, to find ways to make distributed energy resources more valuable. I think as a community choice energy program, a community choice aggregator, um, we'll be in a good position either just from an informational purpose or actually playing a role to help uh, DERs in the city of San Jose get additional wholesale market access to things like demand response or uh, additional grid services, um, those additional revenue streams for DERs uh, in San Jose. So all of that in 2019 is really under development. We have a really phenomenal programs lead, Kevin Meehan, who is talking to our customers, talking to the community, um, doing a lot of research on the existing incentives and programs that are available and really working to design an initial offering of programs um, that will meet these goals that we've laid out for ourselves. Um, an area where I really encourage all of you to get involved is through the Community Advisory Commission. So this is a, a Brown Act regulated uh, commission that meets monthly here at City Hall. Um, these are local community members, a lot of whom have really excellent energy industry experience, who will be working with staff on determining what are the priorities, um, what programs do we start with, what do we pay the most attention to, and really helping us refine our initial program offering into something that really serves the community best. But you can see, you know, from San Jose Clean Energy's work, we want electrification. We want fewer greenhouse gases. And I think all of that work dovetails really well with solar. The more electricity people are using to power their vehicles, or to electrify their home, that just means that their value proposition from solar gets better. 
And the more we can help make distributed energy resources more valuable and improve those ROIs, again, that's only going to be beneficial to your customers. So uh, we've gone through everything in pretty good time, just about half an hour. Um, so what questions, comments, um, anything that you might want to share, um, we've got, you can either raise your hand and I can unmute you, um, or we can, um, do we have a hand up yet? Uh, or you can write it in chat and we can, um, and I can read it out loud and, and do my best to answer it. So I'll give uh, just a minute or two and, and let anyone who wants to, to chime in. All right, uh, Damon, I'm going to unmute you. Um, you need to enter your PIN first, and then I can unmute you. Okay, let me, so I just sent you your PIN again if you didn't have it. Um, so if you want to take a minute and log in, or again, you can put it straight into chat. All right, Damon, go ahead. Hi, um, Damon Franz um, with Tesla. Thank you for um, a great presentation. Um, really excited about the um, the offerings on 100% green um, and net metering. Um, my question was um, on the battery storage incentives. You had mentioned on the last slide that um, you guys are contemplating uh, incentives or programs for battery storage. I just wonder if you could talk a bit more about um, what you could see potentially offering behind the meter and, and um, front of the meter, either for, for incentives or for programs, rates, um, you know, other um, other offerings. Yeah. So um, I can talk a little bit about sort of how my team thinks about it and some of the discussions we've had. Um, one of the things I like to emphasize, though, is that it's still very much uh, open. You know, in this year, we are really defining what our program incentives are going to be. Um, I think storage has tremendous value, and I hope it's part of our initial program's offering. Um, but I would definitely encourage Tesla, and I know that our program lead, Kevin, has been in touch with um, some of the policy team members at Tesla um, to discuss EV charging and battery storage and just get um, good information. Uh, but I could see it happening in a number of different ways. So. One is through the home uh, residential storage and commercial storage that we as a community choice aggregator, we're in a really good position in terms of insight into customers' data, having a, an ongoing financial relationship with customers. We're in a really interesting position where we could really be a valuable facilitator in um, creating new structures where a customer gives over some control of their battery storage system and gets uh, credit for that on their bill. So that for a demand response purpose or for load shaping, um, just our overall procurement, um, I think those sort of aggregation and dispatch um, uses, that's, that's a role that we could, as a CCA, um, we're in a really good position to, to do that work. Um, so in front of the meter storage, um, we, as a, uh, an electric service provider, we have resource adequacy requirements, um, just like PG&E and the IOUs do. So you saw PG&E um, sign the giant uh, MOS landing contract with Tesla um, for battery storage um, there. And that was specifically, to my understanding, for resource adequacy. So there may be future opportunities like that as well, as we at San Jose Clean Energy uh, move out of launch phase and begin doing more long-term procurement. I think that's definitely an area that could be interesting. Um, and I could also see us doing something like an s um, incentivizing battery storage to complement renewable energy development. Um, there's a lot of work being done right now to, you know, help manage the duck curve, um, to help manage our own procurement process. 
Um, so there's really a, a, an enormous number of different ways that we could look at supporting storage behind the meter through incentives, in front of the meter through our own procurement requirements, or working as an aggregator to really just make the value proposition better for all customers. Um, but again, uh, Damon, I really encourage you and your team, come to one of our community advisory commissions, um, contact us um, to communicate to the commission. They're really going to be playing a big role in terms of steering and what we focus on. Um, so if you and, and the other people on this call really want us to be working on battery storage, um, let us let us know that and, and participate in the process. I think us being local and available um, and a lot more flexible than PG&E and the other IOUs ever could be is going to be one of the, the big long-term benefits of community choice. And here in the Bay Area, we just have uh, a huge resource of incredibly um, intelligent, sophisticated customers as well as companies doing really great work here. So I'm excited if we can you know, really get the community and the business community engaged in what we're doing. I think we can really work on some great projects and programs. <clears throat> awesome, thanks. Um, we'll be in touch with Kevin. Great. And uh, again, follow up with me if there's anything I can do to help facilitate. I think he was working uh, with Francesca. Does anyone else have a, um, a question or a comment? Uh, so I'm seeing a question, what are uh, the uh, NCM, uh, Gary, I'm assuming you're meaning the net surplus compensation rates. Um, so I don't know it off the top of my head. Um, it is literally just um, the way we are devising it is by looking at uh, the, uh, a 12 month average for PG&E and setting that as the baseline. And, and we're always going to be significantly above that. Um, below retail, above wholesale, um, and just somewhere in the middle on that NFC rate. So the, I think it's about three and a half cents right now. So really the way to think about it is it's not changing the value proposition for sizing a system. You still wanna keep the same system size optimization, um, but your customers are getting a little bit more fair value if they do happen to be uh, net generators. Yeah, I hope that answered your, your question. Let's see. Ah, I'm seeing a couple more questions. Let me pull them up and I'll, I'll get to them one by one. So what are the NN, NCM rates? So Gary, hopefully I answered that question for you. Uh, next question. Slide said that residents have an option for monthly billing. Yes, thank you. Um, so for residential NEM customers, they can choose to be billed by San Jose Clean Energy on a monthly basis rather than that being part of their annual truck. Obviously, we don't control PG&E's charges or their rates, so you would still have an annual truck for the distribution component of your bill, but for customers that um, are really just having a huge truck at the end of the year, they, are, they can select to be paying their San Jose Clean Energy charges monthly rather than as part of the annual truck. And that, again, for you, you'll want to walk them through that option um, because you can foresee where that might not be beneficial, but for a certain category of customers, that will obviously be a really nice choice. Yes, and someone provided me, uh, thank you, Mike, for providing me the NFC rate. It's uh, three and a half cents, 3.552 cents. So again, another question on the default for monthly versus annual. The default billing will be the same. If a customer is on a, a residential NEM customer, they're going to default to what they're used to. We don't want to switch someone over to monthly billing unless they want to. So the default is everything stays the same. Residential customers can affirmatively choose to be moved to a monthly billing. So that covers the questions. Uh, let me just check uh, attendees' hands one more time. And let me check the chat. Great. So I think that's everything. Um, 
again, if there's something, we're not going anywhere. We're happy to have one-on-one -on -one conversations. Um, so please, if anyone would like to send me a follow-up question by email, uh, me and the rest of the team here at San Jose Clean Energy are happy to help with that. Um, let me give it one more minute just in case anyone has questions. Um, hopefully this corresponds pretty well with maybe some of the questions you've been getting from your customers. Um, and hopefully this does a little bit to give you the information you need. Um, if anyone wants some particular materials in terms of uh, solar information or general San Jose Clean Energy Service, again, please just email me and I'm, I'm happy to send that over by email. All right, I'm not seeing any other questions. Thank you guys for the good questions for uh, reminding me to talk about the monthly billing option. Um, if anyone wants to discuss that or anything further, um, please give me a call or send me an email. And with that, uh, thank you very much for your time and attendance. Um, and I hope this, that we're able to collaborate more in the future and um, that we'll be able to help you serve your customers better. So uh, let us know what we can do and please don't hesitate to reach out. Thank you all very much.